WebTech 2025 had about 1,000 exhibiting companies, so could I vet them all? Of course not. But still, I did my subjective and selected picks. This company is one of them. And if you don't have time for the full WebTech episode, I'm still placing you the link in the description, I thought I'd cut you out this short portrait. You have a PFAS destruction technology, but how do you do that exactly? We destroy <laughs> PFAS through electro-oxidation. We use foreign doped diamond electrodes to create hydroxyl radicals and also a potential on the electrode surface to completely mineralize PFAS down to its, its basic building blocks of sodium fluoride and sodium carbonate. People tell me whether the electrode is the secret or the reactor is the secret. So what is your best weapon? It's definitely the electrodes. Okay. The electrodes that we use are different than any other electrode in the market. When I say boron dope diamond electrode, I mean boron dope diamond electrode all the way through. It's it's one continuous diamond throughout the entire electrode. We're not putting a nano film coating onto a substrate. Our thickness is in millimeters of diamond that we put into our electrode. What that allows us to do is to go to current densities that nobody else can. And that's really important in the destruction of PFAS. When you say that no one else can, that means much more or much less? Nobody else can go to that high of current high. density. Current density, it's amps per meter squared. Okay. So it means how much electricity and, and that is proportional to how much oxidant we can create and the potential that we can create for oxidizing things. That allows us to oxidize things that other technologies cannot. And it also, like, some uh, electro-oxidation technologies have difficulties with short-chain PFAS. Like TFAs or? Uh, TFAs, but even the, the C4s. C4s, to, okay. PFBA, PFBS, we have no difficulty destroying those. We had a, a third-party university do a, a study for us and created rate constants for us to destroy those. We go two orders of magnitude higher current density than anybody else in the marketplace. Two orders of magnitude? Yes. Okay, if you look at conventional um, electro-oxidation that uses maybe metal electrodes, they'll be in the hundreds of amps per meter squared. Mm -hmm. We can go up to close to 40,000 amps per meter squared. So the fact that we can go to that much higher current density makes our system much more compact. When people hear about boron dope diamond, they see dollar signs. We have such high current density, we, we use that two orders of magnitude less electrodes. That's, that's another way to look at it. What you're saying is that the material itself might be expensive, but if you need so much less of it, that it compensates and it means that you're still cost competitive. Yes. And you could also imagine if you had a nanofilm coating of boron dope diamond on something versus having millimeters thick of diamond, how much longer our electrodes last in the same environment than a coating. We've had this technology for more than a decade. We've applied it in many different in industries. So this is not a new technology for us. Applying it for PFAS was the new part. Did we, you have to do some adaptations and new developments to take it to PFAS? Or is it really the tech you had around for 10 years? What we had to do is develop the kinetics and the understanding on what's required to break down the PFAS. The technology itself, um, if you look at the flow scheme and all of that stuff is the same as it's always been. Okay. It's just now we're understanding how much energy we need to use and the economics behind destroying the PFAS. What about the hydraulics? Because having the power density at a specific spot is one thing, but you need also to ensure that the right amount of water flows by the electrodes, how do you guarantee that? We operate in a semi-batch mode. While we are treating one tank, we're filling another tank and then we can switch back and forth. We size our system to be able to treat that tank down to the level of PFAS required by our customer. Mm -hmm. And once treated, then we drain that tank and we switch over to the other tank. So what we're doing is taking this tank of fluid and flowing it through our reactors. So our reactors are flow through. They're not sitting in a stationary mix tank. We're actually pumping it through our reactor. That's kind of key to our design. You mentioned your customers. So where are you in terms of uh, market deployment? We have re commercial references for the technology. We switched over to looking at PFAS. So commercial references for the technology, but not in PFAS. Correct. And now you're looking at PFAS. Yes, and now we've done many pilot studies in many different industries on PFAS. And we're doing those pilot studies at the commercial scale. We have a test unit in Texas that allows us to bring samples in, treat it with electrodes that are at the commercial scale and demonstrate our performance. And what is your scope of deliveries? Are you selling on electrodes? Are you giving a full PFAS destruction as a service? Where in between those two extremes? So for electro-oxidation, a concentration step is necessary. Lummis is prepared to offer the electro-oxidation, of course, and that's a modular supplied equipment. We will also supply the process guarantee from the concentration step 
through the destruction step. Sorry to cut you, but are you concentration step agnostic or would you go for foam fractionation, nanofiltration? What's your preferred one? Up to this point, we've been concentration agnostic. Okay. And that's simply because we believe that all of them have merit. There's going to be instances where media is the right answer, where foam fractionation is the right answer, where membranes are the right answer. We just wanted to have a broad understanding of all those because as I said, we will offer the process guarantee through those and we will have our partners provide the concentration step. So that means what you're guaranteeing is a 99 point something destruction of PFAS. What it comes down to is it's really the water quality, right? That's why we're doing this. We want to destroy the PFAS, okay. but really the it's the water quality that the customer cares about. So it's not the reduction rate, it's uh, you're going to hold the water quality standards for the specific application of your customer. We not only guarantee that we're going to get the performance, we're going to produce this much water with this quality, and we're going to dispose of the PFAS but also at what cost. Do you have a feeling for the cost today? How does it place itself on the scale compared to all the type of technologies? Yeah, so we're excited about that. I think the Boron Dope Diamond, just the sound of that sounds like a high cost technology, but because we're able to use such a small amount of electrodes, the economics really do make sense compared to thermal technologies and to other electro oxidation technologies. Our early indications are that that we outperform them. That is something that we've been working with a lot of customers recently with looking at real examples, working through what our process guarantee would look like, what that would cost them. And the feedback has been really great. What is your typical application? Our technology makes a lot of sense for applications that have a lot of background contamination. So. Okay. Things like landfill leachate, wastewater, industrial wastewaters, things like that have a lot of other things in there that um, none of the electro-oxidation technologies are selective for PFAS. Whatever other COD is in there, whatever other contaminants are in there also have to be destroyed. Oftentimes, it's those other contaminants that end up sizing the system for us. I see. We stay away from applications that, if you can manage it with a media and that media can be recycled in some way, that's difficult to compete with and PFAS destruction is probably not required, particularly not on site, right? There's a very good business model for taking media in and media out. So we tend to stay away from those kind of municipal applications for like drinking water, those, yep. those sorts of things. The bulk of our applications are in industrial type of uh, applications. Take me to the future. Where are you in, let's say 2030? What is Lumus by then? We're already making some pretty serious advancements on the technology. We're excited to uh, be able to talk about those soon. Not to give anything away, but that, you know, we may not always be concentration agnostic. Um, we may have some things in there that, that would help us. We're also looking at ways to produce the electrodes in a fashion that right now our, our electrodes are all flat and um, we're working on ways to have it have a little bit of, of shape to it. What needs to happen in the next 12 months? What needs to happen is happening. You're not ready to announce your uh, pre-filtration, but I can guess that that is something which might be going to come in the next 12 months. We expect it to. Yes. I don't want to push you in the corner or give you a yes, we no, will, just to understand. We will definitely <laughs> be pilot testing with customers okay. in the next 12 months. Yes. Thanks a lot. That's it for today. If you have a bit of time left, YouTube believes you should go watch this. And if you wonder why I picked this company, happy to discuss it in the comments. And I'll see you next time.